Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's January 9th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery here. Video number two on the day. Just gonna try to make this as quick as I can because I just want to share some updates on the latest of what the weather models are saying and what's going on right now with this storm system. You can see it curling up right into the Gulf of the Columbia River here. It's gonna bring some lower snow levels across some of southwest Washington, down towards the Portland Metro, maybe even some of the I-5 quarter. Could get a dusting to a couple inches. Winter weather advisory is an effect for that and this is really going to increase again some of the snowfall across the washington and the oregon cascades and the windy conditions will continue you can see the cold air behind this as well and this is going to keep some of the showers going on in through tomorrow then looking across canada here in the northwest territories in the yukon we got arctic air it's gonna be pivoting down across british columbia as we go through the day thursday and we'll start to take a look at that here in the weather models in a moment still have the blizzard warnings all the way through tomorrow morning i talked about what a blizzard was this morning it's basically when you're extending a very uh, windy, snowy, and low visibility period for three plus hours. And that's all the Cascades and the Olympic Mountains. Here's some of the Blue Mountains and some of the Cascades of Oregon. And this is talking about that snow tonight, perhaps having that dusting maybe one to two inches here down across some of the Portland Metro here, maybe across some of the higher hills to the west and the big amounts incoming here for the Cascades. Now, what everybody wants to know about is what's coming up with the storms here. And I heard a lot of chatter on some of the social media today on about what the weather model's been bringing today. Let me go over a few things. So as we go through tonight, you can see that storm system there. That's bringing the lower snow levels across some of northwest Oregon and southwest Washington tonight, keeping that heavy snow going across some of the Cascades. That storm system moves through, and the residual showers going through tomorrow night. Then we go to Thursday, and that Arctic air starts to get really close here, and we start to bring some convergent zone activity probably across some of southwest BC, down across northwest Washington, and that's going to continue on through the afternoon and evening hours, perhaps sliding down across some of the central sound. It doesn't take much, to, you know, to make things slick out there. So even an inch or so with temperatures going below freezing on into Friday morning could be pretty high impact. And then you can kind of see the next system rolling in here. And this one has kind of been trending a little bit further south than the European. As you can see, it kind of encompasses some of southwest Washington and targets Portland and some of Willamette Valley and Oregon a bit better and kind of leaving Seattle northbound high and dry. But I need to caution everybody here with these storm systems that when you throw a Pacific storm into Arctic air, it almost always throws the precipitation shield a bit further north than what it shows up in some of the model ones. So you got to keep that in the back of your mind. Just a tenth of an inch or two could create two to three inches of some very, you know, relatively dry snowfall here for the Pacific Northwest and some offshore winds. And it could get quite slick quite quickly here. So we got to watch that uh, as we go. And it's going to be kind of a now cast as the storm system moves in to just see where that cutoff is forming as that system moves in as we go on in through Friday, late Friday night and into Saturday. And let me show you something else the models are, are pointing at here in a moment as well. If we look at the GFS, I'll show you that. Here we go with tonight's system rolling through here. Then the Arctic air sags and we get the convergence zone activity on the day and the night Thursday. You can kind of see it across the central uh, cascades there, some of the Puget Sound, some of the low, lower snow levels are going to be showing up here as we go through Thursday night into Friday morning as that precip tapers off eventually from north to south across western Washington, but continues on across the Cascades of Oregon. Then you see the next storm system rolling in here, and the GFS is still further north, but it's trended a bit further south, and it's right on Seattle as the cutoff there. This would be quite a dynamic storm for Portland. As you can see, we got some high pressure back behind the mountains. You'd get some outflow through the Columbia River Gorge, some reinforcing cold there, there but then look what the gfs does as well it continues another system after that as we go through saturday that one bringing us precipitation amounts further north up towards maybe bellingham and kind of bullseye in seattle with that round so some heavy snow would be possible under that scenario so we've got some model differences that we really need to iron out here over the next few days now taking a look at the North American model. This is hot off the presses, the, tw the 0Z run. There's that system tonight with the lower snow levels again across southwest Washington, some of northwest Oregon. Continues that precipitation all the way on and through tomorrow. And really, some of the Cascades of Washington, Oregon are not getting much of a break here all the way on th and through Thursday. Here we go through Thursday evening. Some of that central sound again because be some snow showers out there. Snow just continues to pile up across the Oregon Cascades. Very cold air dropping down out west of the mountains here. And here goes Friday system starts to roll in here and you can see that cutoff right somewhere across southwest Washington and really impacting Portland. And then we go off into the future. Do you see that at the very end of the run? The NAM goes out 84 hours, but look, it's got something similar to the GFS with the system behind that. No 
doubt would come in further north and probably impact Seattle and maybe up towards Bellingham and some of southwest BC. So do not sleep on this system just yet because you see these models trending a bit further south of that system. The NAM and the GFS are showing kind of a secondary low on the back side of that. So that's something we have to watch very closely coming up. And then we have to watch the nowcast situation when that storm rolls in Friday night. How far is that precipitation shield going to move north and just how many of us across Pacific Northwest is that going to impact? And kind of looking at the winds here, I went up to Whidbey Island today, and I'm pretty sure it was gusting probably about 70 miles per hour there up by West Beach, just south of the military base there, Whidbey Island. And, yeah, it was pretty wild. There were significant uh, um, amounts of driftwood across the roads and just waves splashing over houses. It was just absolutely wild out there. Try to get the drone up for a little bit, but the wind was really strong and some pretty impressive winds across the rest of the Pacific Northwest also. So this is still ongoing today, tomorrow, and on in through Thursday. There's going to be some very difficult travel across the higher terrain, especially the Cascades, back and forth across the pass area. So heads up for that. And looking at the NAM3 cam, just running you through here, and you can see it does drop some of that snowfall as we go through tonight. Watch out. Portland Metro North across maybe Kelso, southwest Washington there, and you can see the snow just piling up as we go on in through Thursday. Then you see some of that uh, that snow coming down as we go through Thursday and Thursday night. You know, there's probably going to be some surprise amounts with this Arctic air spilling out between one, two, three inches of snowfall, and with that uh, cold air moving down, if it freezes, that can be quite impactful. And now looking at the European, I want to show you this 500 millibars. If I put that into motion, you can see our polar lobe. It does take that close enough swing where it is going to deposit some cold air. And then that nexus storm system rolls in there. But then the European quicker to cut it off, as I mentioned, versus the GFS in the North American model. And I want to show you why this is not a full-on Arctic outbreak. So at the lower levels of the atmosphere, 2,500, 5,000, even 10,000 feet, some of that cold air is leaking across the higher terrain. But at 8,000 or 18,000 feet, you can see the polar lobe kind of hangs back and you don't get that wind out over the Pacific Ocean for that powerful cyclogenesis off the coastline here. So that Arctic air is not going to be having a big moisture tap with it, but still an inch or two can be quite dynamic with the arrival of the Arctic air. And then that storm system starts rolling in here as we go on in through the day Saturday on the European. And also looking at 850 millibar temperatures, you can clearly see the cold air that's going to be sagging across BC, makes its way all the way down towards Portland here on, uh, this is the 18Z run, the most recent European there. And then the next storm system will be coming in here. A big clash of air masses is going to be taking place. It's going to be very fun to watch this system roll in here as we go through Friday night on into Saturday morning and see if there is a secondary low behind it so kind of a battle of the models going on this is looking at two meter temperature and i'm just going to scroll ahead here and as i'll show you as we go through thursday you can see that cold air sagging across british columbia sinking down across seattle somewhere on thursday night probably going below freezing continue to see that progress down towards portland eventually through friday morning but look at there Friday morning, it's 22 at Seattle. I mean, you're getting very cold across some of Southwest BC, maybe some single digits in the outlying areas in Northwest Washington, very cold east of the mountains as well. And just absolute frigid temperatures here across BC and Alberta, especially behind the Rockies there. Now, looking at the GFS, I want to show you what the GFS is showing because we looked at the storm system and kind of the tracks it's taking. But if we go on in towards Friday night here, you'll see that snow piling up again, just kind of targeting Seattle south. And then that secondary low here, look at that, depositing some nice snow across the central Puget Sound here and maybe even getting a bit further north. But again, we have a few days to watch that system coming in here. It is only Tuesday right now, and these Arctic air masses will have a couple surprises up their sleeves with them as well as these storm systems dive into the pacific northwest here's the nam 12 km just kind of showing you that it is targeting southwest washington and some of the portland metro here with that first storm and then the next storm here as we get into tomorrow that nam run is going to start to show its hand and what it wants to do with that secondary low as well and let's see who caves there with a european cave or with a gfs and the nam and this is looking at 10 to 1 uh, ratio snow. And this is the European Ensemble as of 18Z. So you can see as we go on into this weekend, you can see where it's really targeting again across southwest Washington here. And look at the big snow amounts across the Cascades, Oregon especially. Now the GFS, this is total snow, 50th percentile of all 30 of its Ensemble members. And as we scroll out, you can see Saturdays actually this is the zero z run this is actually hot off the presses let's redo that here and see how much data we have so here we go on through friday 
and you can see it start right at the end of the run there as we go through Saturday night. It does show some of that snow getting up across some of western Washington here, but you can see some really big amounts. There's some big potential with this storm moving in on the day Saturday for sure, but don't get caught up in these details too much just yet. You've seen how much they can change in just one day. Here's the National Blender Models total snow. And this is hot off the press of Zero Z. And you can see it does spread some snow all the way up towards southwest BC here. So, you know, don't get too discouraged just yet, you guys. This Arctic air mass is going to have some surprises up its sleeve. And there are changes still yet to come with it. Um, anyway, now looking at the European ensemble members, you can see Seattle showing some big amounts in some select ensemble means, but the control doesn't show much as you see there. And this is the GFS, much snowier solution but with the GFS. This is Portland with the European uh, and it's been favoring Portland here. Um, and this would be that main system out here, but still some of those ensemble members don't have much. And this is the GFS for Bellingham as well. So it does show the potential for some of that snowfall up towards Southwest BC. And we're going to skip that. I want to show you a Friday Harbor here, Northeast wind, Fraser out flow going on here. You can see the ensemble mean is up over 40 miles per hour, and that's going to kind of be a little bit of a prolonged thing, probably up over six to 12 hours for that wind. And some of the ensemble members have over 50 miles per hour. So just wanted to throw out that quick update here. I'll do my full briefing tomorrow morning. We'll study up a little bit more on everything. We'll have some more models to look at. We'll have tonight's European and actually this afternoon's and tonight's Europeans. We'll have two additional European models to look at by the time I'm up and at it tomorrow. So that'll be fun to look at to see what kind of trends we have with the GFS cave, with the European cave, what's going to go on here. We're going to have some high resolution models to start getting range here pretty quickly as well. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good night. Check out my video there in Whidbey Island, some drone footage out there and I had the camera set up. Just absolutely intense winds. I had some kite surfers out there that were doing all kinds of crazy tricks also. So anyway, um, yeah, we'll do this again tomorrow. Um, hope you guys are liking the videos and I will see you guys then.